Good morning, guys, and welcome to this week's midweek message. Hopefully you find today's message encouraging and enlightening. If you've been looking for ways to partner with Water's Edge, there's four simple ways to do so. The first way is you can give online. You can visit watersedgegathering.com and click on giving. From there, you'll be led to eGive, our online giving platform. Or you can text to give. You can text the word give to 337-223-9003. From there, you can enter a dollar amount and then you'll be led to on-screen instructions. Or you can give within the church app. Make sure to go to your app store and look for the church app. It'll be a white box with a gray cross. And within the church app, search Waters Edge Gathering. From there, you can click on give and give your tithes and offerings. Or you can give by mail. You can do so by mailing Waters Edge Gathering at PO Box 572, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70602, or Waters Edge Gathering at 2760 Power Center Parkway, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70607. Thank you so much for joining us, and now enjoy Pastor Tony's midweek message. What's up, everybody? Welcome to our Wednesday morning teaching video. We hope you're having a good week. Several years ago, I ran across a passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 25 that really, really changed my walk with God. It changed my faith. It changed my relationship with Jesus Christ. It changed my understanding of what it really means to follow Jesus. And it changed my worship, and it changed my understanding of worship. But before I get to the passage, I want to tell you a story. A long time ago, when I first started preaching about 20 years ago, I was at a youth camp. I had brought my youth group to that camp, and it was a really, really powerful week, and God was really moving in the hearts of the students and in the adults. It was really cool. And one night after one of the worship services, everybody had went to the snack shack to get a Snickers bar or a Three Musketeers or a Slurpee or a Coke or something like that. And then they would come back in for late night, and that was the fun part of camp. It was really silly. Late night was really silly, like talent contest and just funny songs and things like that, funny videos. Before they came back in for late night, we had had such a powerful worship service that there was still this overflow in our hearts to worship God. And to be honest with you, a lot of us young leaders were, were just newly discovering worship and the power of worshiping Jesus Christ. My younger brother, Ryan, who's on staff with us here at the Water's Edge, he was already leading worship. And uh, he was a part of the worship band. And so before everyone came back in to the auditorium, my younger brother, Ryan, picked up his guitar on stage and he just began to play very softly different worship songs. After a while, I joined him on stage and we began to sing those songs and just kind of worship together, just him and I. A few minutes later, a few other people joined us on stage and they began to sing with us and worship with us. And we were really just kind of pressing in to the presence of God. And this all started around nine o'clock at night. And then the next thing you know, just one after another, more people kept crawling on that stage and worshiping with us. And at two o'clock in the morning, I looked around and there was 200 people on that stage, on their face, worshiping God. None of it was planned. None of it was manipulated. It just happened. In one moment, we would be on our face, crying out to God, lifting our hands, and then the very next moment, we would be jumping for joy in the presence of God. I remember I took a step back at one time and I was watching the stage. There was so many people on the stage and the stage was about to buckle. And it was just an amazing experience. It went from nine o'clock to two o'clock in the morning. Needless to say, we didn't have late night that night. We went back to our dorms and we continued to pray with each other and worship God. And it was just an amazing, amazing experience. After that experience, I fell in love with worship. I just couldn't get enough. Every worship CD I could find, I would buy it, and I would just fill my heart and fill my mind with worship. And worship did a lot of things for me. Falling in love with worship helped set me free from so many things. It helped clear my mind. It helped give me peace. It helped my intimacy with God. It would help me when I was lonely, or depressed, it would break bondages in my life. That's how moving personal worship is with Jesus. That's how powerful personal worship is with Jesus Christ, and I craved it. But I learned something later on in my Christian life that was very important, and this is what it was. Not everyone in this life worships the same way, and not everyone is moved to worship 
by the same things. And this is what I mean. When we worship, worship is what helps us draw closer and closer and closer to God. A good way to think about worship is to think of it this way. It's worth-ship. God is worthy of our, our intimacy and our love. And so it's this pouring out of love and emotion in our hearts towards God and to experience his presence. But different people experience that in different ways and they experience different things that help them draw closer and closer to God. For me, at that time in my life, I, I would worship God the most effectively through worship music and, and worship services and things like that. But different people and also sometimes you at different seasons in your life will realize that sometimes that's not what works right now anymore. And so you have to discover something else to help you worship Jesus Christ. And also, a lot of times when people find something that helps them worship, a lot of times they'll become judgmental. Judgmental towards other people who don't worship like them. I've met a lot of people like that. Oh, you don't sing like us? Y'all must not be true worshipers. You don't pray like us? Y'all must not be true worshipers. You don't raise your hands like us? You must not be true worshipers. And that's just not true. Different things help different people worship in different ways. And you will find that at different seasons in your life, you will need different things that help you worship in different ways. And so today, I wanna share with you one thing that changed my view of worship. And one thing, one thing that always, no matter what, always helps me experience the presence of God. And it helps me feel the presence of God. It helps me draw into the presence of God. And it helps me feel close to God no matter what I'm going through. And I want to explain it to you today by reading you this passage out of Matthew chapter 25. It's Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Why? For I was hungry, Jesus said, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will say, Lord, When did we ever do this? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say this, and this is so key. I tell you the truth. When you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you're doing it for me, for the least of these. But then... The king will turn to those on his left and say, Away with you. You're cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you gave me no clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. And then they're going to reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked? or sick, or in prison, and not help you. And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help me, the the least of these my brothers, when you refuse to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. When you reject the least of these, Jesus says you rejected me. And they'll go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So notice in this passage how Jesus separates the righteous from the unrighteous on the day of judgment. Those on his right were considered the righteous, the sheep. Those on his left, the unrighteous, the goats. Those on his left, the goats, cannot enter the kingdom. Those on his right are welcome to enter the kingdom. Why? Jesus says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was hurting, when I was a stranger, sick and in prison, you took care of me. And they said, we didn't do that to you. And Jesus said, yes, When you did it to the least of these, of society, it's like you were doing that for me. And then he turns to those on his left, and most of them were highly religious. 
And he said, you can't enter the kingdom. Why? Because you didn't feed me or give me drink or take care of me. And they said, when did we not do that for you? And he said, when you rejected the least of these, you're rejecting me. So this is what has always, always helped me feel close to God. But before I tell you, let me just tell you this. The truest test of our faith is how we love, care for, and serve the least of society. So what has always helped me worship when worship music didn't help anymore, when praying was just like a desert and my prayers were bouncing off the ceiling, when my soul was dry on the inside, when I felt nothing at church, what has always helped me come back to intimacy with God was feeding, loving, serving, accepting, caring for, helping, and comforting the least of these in society, the hurting in society, the rejected of society, the outcast of society, the throwaways of society, the oppressed in society, and the unwanted in society. This has always helped me draw close to God. Whenever I feed somebody, I can feel God overwhelming in that moment. Whenever I serve someone with no strings attached in that moment, no matter what I'm going through, I can feel the presence of God in an overwhelming way. When I practice love and acceptance and I, and I reach out to those who've been rejected and they're broken and they're lonely and they're suicidal and I sit with them, I can feel the presence of God in those moments much more than being in a worship service where God is breaking loose. <laughs> I can feel God so much more in those moments when I am next to the least of these. Mother Teresa said this, she goes, I have to feed the poor because every time I look into their face, the face of the dying, it's like I'm looking into the face of Jesus. Do you know what this passage means? It does not mean to treat people like Jesus would. That's not what the passage means. Oh, Tony, I get the point. Treat people the way Jesus would treat people. No, no, the point of this passage and the point of Jesus was this, that we have to treat the most broken of society like they are Jesus, like we're staring at Jesus in the face. And so that's what the point of this passage was. You treat the most broken of society like literally that's Jesus standing in front of you. And if Jesus himself were in front of you right now, how would you treat him? You would feed him. You would honor him. You would love him. You would respect him. That's how you would treat Jesus. So how dare us say that we're Christians and we're worshiping God when we don't treat the least of these, the most broken and rejected of society with honor and love and acceptance and respect. Every time I do this, it helps me worship, helps me feel close to God. So the next time you feel like you're in the desert in your worship experiences, you're just cold and you can't feel God and you don't feel intimate with God, try something different. Try something new. Try serving the least of these. Because if you really want to be close to Jesus, you have to run to those people that Jesus is running to. If you really want to be close to Jesus, you have to be close to those people that Jesus is seeking after. And that's always the least of these. We love you. Have a great week. Don't forget to tune in to our Sunday morning online experience. It's going to be cool. Have a great week.